Hey, everybody, I'm Greg. I'm senior pastor here at uh, Park Avenue Church in Minneapolis, Twin Cities. I hope and pray you're staying healthy and safe right now. I'm glad you're connecting with us, though, for Park's online worship. You know, in addition to folks uh, here at Park Avenue in the Twin Cities, people from all over the nation actually worship with us through this online platform. People in different states like California, Pennsylvania, North Dakota, Georgia, to name a few. Um, and beyond the U.S., there are folks around the world who worship with us. For example, those are people who live in the Philippines, or Peru, and Great Britain, Europe. So I want to say welcome to everyone, and I'm so glad we're here. We can breathe love together. And I want you to know that we consider each of you to be part of Park's family. And in the coming weeks and months, I would love to facilitate other ways for all of us, no matter where we are, to connect in other meaningful ways. That's the beauty and the power of technology. It opens up a world of possibilities for us to be together, to breathe love together. I'd love to figure that out. So if you have ideas or would like to lend your expertise to help make this happen, please let me know. I'd love to talk to you. And now let's uh, join my brother Darrell Williams as he leads us in this call to worship. Thank you for that, Pastor Greg. Good morning, Park Avenue. This is Darrell Williams, the youth director. Now let us proceed to the call of worship. Matthew 14, 16. Here's another way to put it, if you will. You are here to be light, bringing out God's colors to the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. And if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hilltop and on the light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives by opening up to others because you'll prompt people to be open with God. This generous Father in heaven, now go and be lit. Amen. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave blessed consolation Just to let me know my trials come To only make me strong And I've seen lots of faces There's been times I've felt so all alone And in my lonely hours Yes, those precious lonely hours Jesus let me know I am His 
Will you join together with me as we prepare to go before our Lord, seeking his ear to hear us and to show us mercy in our time of need. It is always a good time to come together to pray what is on our hearts to our Lord and Savior who is ready, willing, and waiting to hear from us. O oh Lord, how excellent is your name above all the earth. We are grateful for your love for us. There is no way that we could repay all that you have done for us. You give us new life. You restore our souls. You forgive us over and over. You watch over us when we are awake and when we sleep. Thank you. We are asking for restoration today. Restore us, O oh Lord. Restore our weakened spirits. Show us your ways, Lord, and strengthen us so we will not grow faint. Strengthen your people. We pray for healing for our country. We need you more than ever. We are fragile and we are on edge. The pandemic is surrounding us. Sometimes we do not know which way to turn. Help us to turn to you, to look to you for wisdom and strength. Help us to look to you as your word tells us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Lord, let your wisdom fill our leaders of this country, of this state of Minnesota, of this community, and of our church. Let your wisdom permeate every fiber of their being. We will continue to stand and ask for your help in the fight for justice. We will not grow weary, but will remember Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Lord, we pray for those in our congregation that are in need of encouragement and healing. Help us as we go into these winter months of dark days, remembering that we are called to be a light in the darkness. We pray for the spirit of kindness and care and concern for our neighbor. Help us not to let it be about me, but us. We pray for those grieving and ask for your comfort for them. We pray for our teachers, our children, families, and protection for our essential workers. We pray that the COVID pandemic will lessen and that our hospitals and medical teams will not be overwhelmed in the name of Jesus, we pray. May your grace and mercy continue to extend far and wide over this church and this neighborhood. We close this prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. 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 Amen. Hey, thank you for making giving to Park part of your generous offerings to God. And with so many opportunities to give to worthy causes, it really means a lot that you trust God and trust Park with your, with your gifts. Our collective giving allows us to continue to enhance and expand new ways to worship together, learn to love and be loved, and engage in justice and healing for our community and world. And in short, our giving sustains and it broadens our collective witness to be compassionate just as God is compassionate. Now, of course, you can give by sending your check by mail. You can give securely through our electronic giving options by going to parkhavechurch.org slash give. You can even participate in giving right now. Uh, join me using this Park Secure Text to Give option and text your offering with me 888-318-8032. And again, we're grateful and trust God to multiply what we offer for God's work in the world. So as many of you, as you, many of you know, <laughs> we've just launched our Breathe Love Giving Initiative for 2021, which seeks to fund next year's budget through giving estimate commitments. 
We built the Breathe Love budget for next year on three strategic areas, worshiping together, learning to love and be loved, and engaging in justice and healing for our neighborhood and world. Those three areas we're focusing on. And now you're about to see a video or part of a video we created to tell the story of this, of this budget. This is part one, learning to love and be loved. So please go to our website to watch the whole thing, to see a fuller breakdown of the 2021 Breathe Love budget, and to find out how you can make your own estimate of, of a giving commitment. We love that. Go to parkavchurch.org slash give and follow the link to the Giving Initiative page. So enjoy. So if you've been with us for the last two weeks, you know I'm in the middle of a four-part sermon series called Divine DNA. It's a part of our Breathe Love Year of Compassion uh, focus. So if you would, let me recap where we've been so far. What I'm asking you to do is think along with me about our God-created, God-breathed identity as church. What does it mean to see ourselves and genuinely be ourselves as God's image bearers, as carriers of divine DNA? And at the core of our divine DNA identity is this great remember who you are encouragement from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. God's divine power 
has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, God has given us the very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature. We are participants, partakers of the divine nature, created with, constituted by, and carriers of divine DNA. We come directly from the manufacturer with everything we need through Christ to be who we are. So how do we recognize, become confident in, and live out this divine DNA within us, within others, and practice our God-breathed, God-beloved divine DNA identity as an organizing principle for our life together as church, yes, even church in a pandemic. I don't see this series as providing all the answers, but merely a way to stimulate our thinking, to spark our collective imagination, to get you to thinking. And I want you to think with me about who we are and what that might mean for who we want to become as we lean in to a hope-filled future. Uh, how does embracing the truth that we are carriers of divine DNA motivate us to love one another and know we are loved? How does that identity inspire how we breathe God's love in and out for the sake of others, engaging in justice and healing for our community? And so the scripture gives us many divine DNA markers, often in these you are or we are statements, these affirmations. Uh, and these affirmations are not suggestive, as in you could be. They're, they're not demanding, as in you better be. Amazingly, they, are def they definitively declare who God affirms us to be. You may not know it. Maybe you do it once and forgot. For sure, such bold affirmations can be difficult to grasp or trust or accept. But these divine markers, God's you are and we are affirmations, assert this is who you already are. This is who we already are. For example, 1 John 3 tells us always to remember, we are children of God, which we looked at in the first message. And in, the, in 1 Corinthians 12, Paul tells us never to forget that we are Christ's body, which we dove into a bit last week. And in this third message, will you think with me about another marker of our divine DNA? We are the light of the world. So listen to what Jesus declares in our passage for today, Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. This is what he says. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So that's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I wonder if you do something with me right now from wherever you're watching or listening on your phone or computer at home or in your car, just take a moment and slowly whisper this God affirmed Jesus declared affirmation identity to yourself. And look, I know this is, this will feel a little weird for some of you, but will you do it with me anyway? So just whisper that to yourself. You are the light of the world. Let that sink in. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Now, let's get a little more personal. Whisper to yourself this. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Now, one more thing. Recognize your kinship with others. And let's go one step further and whisper this to yourself. We are the light of the world. Whisper that. We are the light of the world. 
we are the light of the world. Now, so let me ask you, how does that strike you? What does that do to you? What's going on inside you right now other than this pastor's a little weird? What are you feeling right now? What are you, what are you thinking? Do those words that you just whispered energize you? Do they make you feel uncomfortable? Uh, anyone feel a bit hesitant to claim Jesus' affirmation for yourself? Because I have to say, my first reaction is to buck against the truth of his words with a bunch of self-doubts. Surely that can't be true, can it? You are the light of the world. In the deepest part of who you are, there's a candle in your heart ready to be kindled, as the poet Rumi writes. There's a void in your soul ready to be filled. You feel it, don't you? Remind all those who tell you otherwise that love comes to you of its own accord and the yearning for it cannot be learned in any school. You are the light of the world. You feel it, don't you? So what in the world is Jesus getting at when he audaciously says that you are the light of the world? So will you, do you mind if I take just a little bit of time for a brief overview of, this, of light in the Bible? So from the beginning of the Bible in Genesis 1, light is associated with God's creative energy to generate life itself from day one. This is what it says. First, this, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. And then God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss, and God spoke light, and light appeared. God saw that the light was good, and he separated light from dark. God named the light day. He named the dark night. It was evening. It was morning, day one. The light of God creates something out of nothing. It enters into a formless, shapeless, dark, and empty world to fill it with life. And here's something incredible to chew on. You ready for this? In the origins narrative of Genesis 1, what do you think it means that this creative, life-generating, void-filling light of God comes before the creation of the solar energy, uh, the solar energy of the sun and the stars? Those lights, the lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, as Genesis says, that serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, those lights that give light on the earth, those lights come on day four. And what's the climactic event of the light-creating, life-generating, creative process in Genesis 1? Humankind, Adam. Adam created in God's divine image, men and women. So is it any wonder that Einstein proved that light is the fundamental reality of life itself. Everything in the universe is, in some sense, relative to light. Without light, there is no life. So now flip over in the New Testament to the Gospel of John chapter 1, and you see that John links the life-generating life of God to the light-generating, life-giving presence of Christ. In the beginning was the Word, John says, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him and through him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And this word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The light of Christ, the light of God. And later in John 8, Jesus identifies himself as God's life-generating light. I am the light of the world, he says in John 8. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
So folks, let this capture your heart. What do you think it must mean that your divine DNA identity, our collective divine DNA identity as church, is caught up in the truth of Jesus' own identity. And he declares we carry the same identity he affirms for himself. You are the light of the world. And maybe this is some of what Dietrich Bonhoeffer was getting at when he wrote once that Jesus became like us so we would become like him. So in, the Apostle Paul is not shy about communicating this incredible truth to the folks in the churches at Ephesus. In Ephesians 5, he says, Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light, the light effect, the result of this light is found in all that is good and right and true. You are light. The God light within us radiates among us. As one poet theologian writes, you don't need to seek the light. You are light. Light of God's love shining in your being. Meditate on this light glowing from within. Trust this light given, not made. Don't worry about shining the light. It already shines. Simply be mindful. Open the shutters of your heart and let the divine light radiate. You are light. Amazing, isn't it? You. Yes, you are the light of the world. Not the light of the church. This is something else. We are the light of the world, Park Avenue. That's who God affirms us to be. That's who we really are. And just like we don't have to prove light's existence. It just is. There is no hiding the light and no darkness, no matter how inky black, can cause us to forever lose the light. At the very minimum, the extraordinary affirmation that we are the light of the world means we can live confidently and freely with nothing to prove, nothing to hide, and nothing to lose. We don't have to hold back or tamp down who we are. We are carriers of divine DNA. We are conveyors of God's nature. We are light with the ability to warm cold hearts and expose a way through the darkness, as McClurton writes. We are meant to be rays of compassion, beams of justice, glimmers of grace, and lanterns of love. We are, we are, are true, when we are true to our essence, Mark Evans, we alter the world around us just by being who we are. We don't have to try to be more than we are. We simply have to be ourselves, to love ourselves as we are now. What could be better than that? So just look at it, Park Avenue. In all the ways we breathe love together, in all the ways we imagine the hope-filled, compassion-motivated future of our life together, our collective identity is this. You, we are the light of the world. That's who we really are. That's our divine DNA. And we must do our best and help one another never to forget it. Sweet. 
As we say each week, I can do all things through Jesus Christ, who strengthens me. And as a church, together, we can do all things through Jesus Christ, who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It means a lot that you're here with us. We pray that this has been a meaningful and inspiring experience for you. Let us know how we can connect with you further, or if you'd like information about being involved at Park, send us an email at info at parkavchurch.org. The work of Park Avenue Church is sustained by generous people who include Park in their financial giving. You can give safely and securely by following this link. Thank you, and God bless.